Palantir's stock has seen a remarkable rise, closing at a new multi-year high, with gains approaching 500% since early 2023. This dramatic growth has been one of the most impressive stock price moves in the market over the past year and a half, creating significant wealth for early investors from 2022 and 2023. While some are calling it a wealth-changing stock, it sparked debate on whether now is the time to sell, not due to a failing business model, but because of concerns over its high valuation. In response to the idea that Palantir might be overvalued, this video offers a different perspective. With the possibility of inclusion in the S&P 500 growing closer, the stock's future potential will be explored, particularly by evaluating various valuation scenarios and how they could influence its trajectory from here. Now, regarding the current situation, Palantir's price-to-earnings (PE) ratio is around 80, which some might quickly dismiss as overvalued compared to the broader market average PE ratio. It's easy to say, sell the stock when a stock trades well above the market average. However, that's the easy route, it avoids running projections, doing math, and considering the growth potential of a company in its specific sector. To truly determine whether a stock is overpriced or a good deal, you need to analyze its future growth prospects and run the numbers. While it might seem simple to base judgments on P-E ratios alone, deeper analysis is necessary to understand its true value. It's easy to label a stock as overpriced or a ripoff just by looking at a high P-E ratio, but if investing were that simple, everyone would achieve incredible returns in the stock market. In reality, it requires a lot of analysis to determine whether a stock is truly a great deal or overpriced. One argument being made is that Palantir, with its current P-E of 80, is in nosebleed territory. The stock has surged over 37% since the last update, especially after reporting impressive Q2 FI 2024 results, with revenue and earnings beating estimates. The strength of its U.S. commercial segment, driven by high demand for its AI platform, AIP, along with a record number of large deals, has led to significant growth. However, some believe Palantir's addition to the S&P 500 has pushed its valuation too high. With management's guidance and market expectations factored in, they argue there's more downside than upside in the short term. This led one analyst to downgrade Palantir to a sell with a price target of $27. It's important to consider that Palantir could continue to rise, potentially reaching $40 with the momentum from the S&P 500 inclusion and then experience a correction down to around $34. But predicting this is tricky. If it runs to $40 and drops to $34, those calling it a sell now may still look off the mark. To justify such a downgrade, one would have to expect Palantir to fall as low as $27. From a personal perspective, Palantir has been a highly profitable stock, generating substantial returns. SaaS companies typically command higher P.E. ratios than average businesses due to their excellent margins, sticky business models, and top-tier customer bases. So, while Palantir might be trading at four times the average company, within the SaaS sector, it might be closer to three times. The next question is whether Palantir's earnings and revenue growth are at least three times that of an average stock. This comparison helps provide a clearer picture of whether Palantir's valuation is justified given the strong growth potential typical in the SaaS space. When considering average stocks versus Palantir, the growth potential really stands out. For Palantir, next year's expected earnings per share EPS, growth is around 48%, while many other stocks typically fall within the 8-12% to range. This means Palantir's growth is about four times that of an average stock. Similarly, analysts expect its revenue to grow by around 20%, though I think that number is underestimated and will likely be much higher. In comparison, many companies are seeing revenue growth between 4.5% and 6.5%, again making Palantir's growth rate about four times higher. So, if Palantir's valuation is roughly four times that of an average stock but it's delivering four times the growth, it may not be overvalued at all, in fact, it could be fairly priced. 
and if we consider that SaaS companies typically trade at higher P.E. ratios than the market average, it could even be argued that Palantir is undervalued. It's easy to dismiss a stock with a higher P.E. ratio as overvalued, but when you run the numbers and consider the company's growth rates, the picture changes. Palantir is a growth stock, not a value stock, its growth rates and margins are far beyond those of value stocks like Coca-Cola or McDonald's, and it needs to be evaluated accordingly. Now, if we look at Palantir, running some realistic projections offers a clearer view. If Palantir grows revenue at an average rate of 27% over the next several years, something might be achievable, and sees net income growth of around 45% annually, it could reach a net income margin of 37% by 2028. While valuing the company at a P.E. ratio of 20 to 30 would make it seem overpriced today, that wouldn't reflect the reality of its growth potential. A SaaS company growing revenue and net income at rates of 25% and 40%, respectively, deserves a much higher multiple than the broader market average. Valuing Palantir at a more realistic P.E. of 50 to 70, which is 2.5 to 3.5 times the average stock, makes more sense. Running these numbers suggests a compound annual growth rate, CAGR, for Palantir of 14% on the low end and 24% on the high end. By the way, if you are benefiting from the content so far and want more like this, hit the subscribe button, turn on the notifications bell, and comment the word more. Just go ahead and type the word more so I know. Now that you've commented, let's continue. Additionally, Palantir is likely to buy back shares over the next few years, which could further boost earnings per share EPS, rather than diluting shareholder value. This share buyback potential, combined with strong growth metrics, underscores why Palantir's current valuation may be more justified than it appears at first glance. When you begin to look at Palantir through a more realistic lens, you realize something crucial, Palantir is not cheap, and it's not going to trade cheaply for a long time. If you're hoping to see Palantir trading at a 20 to 30 PE ratio, that simply might not happen in this decade. You might get that chance in the 2030s if growth slows significantly, but for now, because Palantir's growth rates are far superior to most companies and they are so well positioned in their market, it's going to command a higher multiple. Palantir is essentially a premium stock, like a Ferrari in the stock market. Just as you wouldn't expect to buy a Ferrari for the same price as a Honda Civic or Accord, you can't expect Palantir to trade at the same valuation multiples as companies like Pepsi or McDonald's. It's common sense when you think about it. Premium stocks with higher growth rates and better positioning in their industries will always come at a higher price, and Palantir fits that profile perfectly. Now, if we consider higher growth rates, such as the 30% growth rate Palantir CEO, Alex Karp, used to discuss before the interest rate hikes in 2022, it becomes even more apparent. Although growth slowed across many companies during 2022, Palantir's growth rates have been climbing steadily again. If they return to 35% revenue growth and 50% net income growth, they could easily maintain a net income margin of around 33%, close to what Microsoft operates at. Even using a conservative P.E. range of 50 to 70, when realistically, a company growing at 35% on the top line and 50% on the bottom line could command a P.E. of 100 plus, Palantir would have a compound annual growth rate, CAGR, between 18% and 28%. So, the idea of Palantir trading at a low P.E. ratio of 20 to 30 is simply unrealistic. When evaluating whether Palantir is a buy or sell, you need to recognize that it's a premium stock with strong growth potential. It won't trade cheaply like traditional value stocks because it operates on a different level of growth and positioning. Don't forget that God the creator of heaven and earth is the giver of all wealth. Acknowledge him in your plans and he will direct your paths. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 if you have watched the whole video until the end, drop a comment like this, I stayed until the end. Just comment that I stayed until the end. When I see this comment, I will give you a heart. There are three more important steps to build wealth from nothing. First, like this video, subscribe and then turn on the notifications bell.
If you do this, you highly motivate me to continue bringing to you transformative videos every week. Do not miss out on our future videos full of knowledge and wisdom, all I am asking is your subscription. Thanks for joining us today, your support is appreciated so much. Do not hesitate to share this video to help someone, I recommend that you watch the next video, subscribe to the channel and share your thoughts about today's video. Thank you, see you in the next video by God's grace, we love you, and blessings to you.